All right, so we're back, um, still in halftime, but uh, we have an exciting visitor up at the booth, and that is Coach Jesse Chinchar. And uh, John Garcia, I think, has a few questions for, uh, for Jesse. Well, Jesse, I'm not going to focus too much on the game tonight. Mm -hmm. It's 36 nothing. You guys are, are, are playing great. Uh, but just in general, I think we've talked a lot about these high-level recruits and just the type of task it is to bring them away, not only from their families, but oftentimes their, their country as well. W what is that like in terms of leading and asking these kids to do that? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think it's a lot, and I think that that's a great question because I think a lot of people see the success and they don't think through all the logistics and what it means to leave your family. And these kids are so dedicated that for them, they will do anything to accomplish their goals. And so first I would say it takes a ki the right kid, you know, and you have to identify the right kid who's mature enough and has that desire and that passion to be willing to, you know, leave their family behind and chase their, chase their goals. And, you know, on our end, it definitely requires a lot of work getting them here. But, you know, as you can see, it's worth it. Absolutely. Pre-game, we talked about that as like a buy-in. Mm -hmm. These kids have to totally buy in with their whole lives, not yep. just their football lives. How much benefit of the doubt does that give your players when college coaches come around? Because now that whole leaving home adjustment yeah. that most high school seniors have to deal with when they go to college, yep. these kids have already done it. Again, spot-on question. I, th I say this all the time. Our kids go to college more with the maturity of a sophomore than a freshman. They've already done that step. They've already moved away. They've already gotten used to it. They've already gone through the homesickness, figured out how to cope with that. And by the time they get to college, I mean, you see some of our guys having a lot of early success, and I think that's why. You know, when I first met you and started coming around this program, it was like, this kid needs attention, this kid needs attention. Yeah. Now it's a little bit quicker, right? Yeah. It comes a little bit faster. You know, I think of a guy like Isaiah Hastings who, yeah. who gets here in June and gets, you know, double-digit offers that month, and every month since has picked up bigger and better offers. Yeah. Um, what is it like when you see that type of hitting the ground running with, with the goal, which is, which is obviously to go to college and play for, sure. for free? I mean, it's so exciting because that's what they come down here for, you know, and for me, it's so awesome to go into a game like this on Friday night, and these are really fun moments. But ultimately, like, the most important thing for us is helping them accomplish their goals. And so when you see somebody get an offer right away or get an Alabama that's been a lifelong dream, like, those are the moments that you remember forever. You know, the Friday nights are awesome, but they kind of blur, you know. But the moments like that, like, Isaiah got to do a Zoom call with Nick Saban. And, like, just his face when he got to tell me, like, Coach, like, I, I get a call with Saban on Wednesday. That's you know, like, you don't forget that, and he'll, he'll never forget that, whether he goes to Bama or not. Right, right. What about, like, the uh, discipline, getting yeah. these guys to, to study in the classroom? Yeah. Because they're coming from other countries. Sometimes yeah. English is a second language. Y and yeah, and, and that's a task, too. You know, I think our school does an amazing job, and without Clearwater Academy, we wouldn't be able to have this team. You know, first and foremost, it's because of the amazing job that the school does and the academic team and the guidance counselors and the, the teachers. They yeah, but you're not telling us what you do, and I know you <laughs> you do a lot to get that done. Yeah, we, we I know you're not in, you know, yeah. teaching them, but still. No, we, we do, but I like to give credit to the teachers and the right. academic team. I mean, we push our guys. Our big thing is we say greatness is the standard, and we tell them that that's across the boards, and it starts with the classroom, you know. We always say, which it's a cliche, but everybody says it, but it's so true. Student athlete, you know, is, is said for a reason. Student comes first. And if you're not academically cutting it, you're not going to play for us. Right. Earlier in this broadcast, the guys were talking about how this team seems very together yeah. and disciplined. Yeah. How much does that help you navigating a season against – really good competition because the talent is, yeah. has been here for sure but now it, it doesn't hit another level it does and you know I think that that was the big point for us this year of, of emphasizing is you know we want that family feel and you look at like the Indianas of the world and the Clemson and the the culture aspect that they put on a genuine relationship with each other and really caring about each other and we realized like look we're up against big odds. We've got guys from all around the world who have never played together. You know, you play a team like, like Manatee, for example. Some of these kids have, most of these kids have grown up together. You know, the seniors played all four years together for the most part, except for a couple of trans transfers. And so just realizing that that is a barrier and putting such heavy emphasis on it earlier, the kids did amazing, though. They took, you know, took everything that we gave them, hit the ground running. They came up with their own saying. They called it Ohana, which, you know, means family and nobody gets left behind. And, you know, I, I give, again, the credit to the kids. Little Lilo and Stitch love. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, to put you on the spot real quick, some players who maybe don't have yeah. 
the attention that you think they deserve. Sure. You, you know the yeah. game, right? Nick yeah. Saban talks to you. Dabble Swinney talks to you. Yeah. They tell you what they want. Who yeah. are some guys that can play at a high level that aren't kind of reciprocating that, that yeah. attention just yeah. yet? Yeah, I mean, let's start with Lucas Stanzani. He's a five-year starter. He's got a you know potential to break this career passing record for the state of Florida. Like, this kid can spin the football. And he can run he a can little bit now. 76 yard touchdown run in the first half. Against Tyreek Allen, yeah. who's the best player on Torch, Manatee's Torched Torch the Division One safety, made right. him look a little slow. No offense, but Luca's fast, you know? Right. Um, so start first and foremost with Luca. Go to Dylan Jette. I mean, Dylan had two touchdowns in the first half. He's at 11 on the season in six games. I mean, this kid has, I mean, we've had some big time receivers out there. And if you guys are watching, I love you all, but Dylan's outproduced you all. All of them. Doesn't matter where you guys are. <laughs> Dylan is the man. We call him Dirty Dylan for a reason because he gets it done. Uh, I mean, those two first and foremost, but there's so many. Gio Vaccaro, um, shoot, Evan Rollick. We've got guys across the boards that deserve a little love. And we're going to, you know, because they come down for one or two seasons, we have to l work a little bit harder and be patient. But, you know, I, as you can tell, I'm passionate about my guys and think they deserve a little more than they get sometimes. It is easy to see. Uh, anything else? No, I want to cut it short because I know that uh, Jesse to needs coach. to get uh, – into the locker room before the end of the second half. Thanks a lot, Jesse. Yeah, thank you, guys. It's a Good pleasure luck. as always. Thank you, guys, everybody who's watching. I watch the broadcast after all our long games and watch you guys' comments. We love you guys. You guys make this thing awesome. Thank you, guys. Thanks.